Welcome to the Manatee River here in Palmetto, Florida. Well, that's Bradenton over there. This is Palmetto, Florida. Got the golf cart out here on the dock because we're going fishing. My cousin Brian is a captain down here and he's going to take us out. So we're going to get a little bit of bonus fishing footage. I think we're going to go after some triple tails today. Triple tail is an excellent fish and uh, we're going to be throwing shrimp at him. It'll probably just be him catching all the fish because he's the expert. But beautiful day. Figured I'd take y'all along. Day after Thanksgiving. All right, we are leaving the nest. And it's a beautiful, beautiful morning here in Manatee County. Yep. So, got a triple tail right here on this buoy. They like to hang out on the surface near structure. This is beautiful Anna Maria Island. This is where we vacation every year. Just a perfect setting for a little fish catch. Brian here is going to throw a shrimp. I think my dad's going to catch him. And we're going to film. You can see the fish. Uh, we ain't caught him yet, but you can see the fish sitting right there. You can't really see him on camera, I don't think. Get him. Get that fish. Triple tails. Oh yeah, look at, look at this action. Little jump, little jump. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Folks, y'all can't beat this view, can you? This is the this is the way to film fishing right here. Have to get a tower for the bass boat. Oh, that's cool right there. Get him, get him, get him. Boom. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pretty fish. <laughs> get him. Yeah. <laughs> Bowie brim. Bowie brim. <laughs> yeah. Look at that, folks. Woo! Look at the, look at the stomach on him. Oh man, that's a nice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Good well, deal. You can cut it. All right, everyone, I gotta make it quick because there's music playing in the background, so I may get copyrighted. But I'm at a church event in the little town of Miccosukee, Florida. And wouldn't you know it, there happens to be a bait station. So I've been here for a little bit making some baits. This is Kurt, he's in the Brave shirt. He runs that right there. We've got a microwave, a bunch of AI molds, dead on plastic, of course, all the good stuff. He's been making some baits. I've been kind of watching along. We've been talking uh, talking shop, but wanted to give him a shout out real quick before we start today's video. All right, so one of the molds that uh, Josh sent me when he um, sent a lot of stuff my way were these grubs. And um, yeah, I, I have to say, I have personally never used a grub this big. Now recently, um, as you saw in the beginning of the video, when I was on Thanksgiving break, uh, my cousin, you know, he's a saltwater uh, captain and, uh, you know, guides people on fishing trips. He actually had a couple of grubs rigged up on big jig heads that literally looked about this size. I think this is an eight incher. Uh, it has an extremely big tail. It's very big in proportion to the body, which I absolutely love. Um, this tail is definitely bigger than the tail on the grub that I saw on his boat. But that got me thinking, oh yeah, I need to use that grub mold, uh, the one that Josh sent me. So this is a, uh, an 8 inch grub. As you can see, it's, it's a pretty good size and uh, I think we'll have some fun. Now we're not just going to shoot plastic in them. I think we're going to go all out. You know, we're going to like actually skin pour these, maybe do some uh, dusting, dusting with glitter even, and just try to make two really fancy grubs. What do y'all think? I think we can do it. All right, so first things first, I actually want to just fill these up with a laminate because I want to try to get the tails to sort of be a laminate between this kind of green pumpkin and orange. Now, these are just remelt pucks that I had left over for some, from uh, some swim baits and things like that. But I've never shot this mold uh, laminate, but I'm doing it this way to try to get a certain effect in the tails. So this is a complete 
experiment. I have no idea how this is going to go, but here we go. Let's see. Okay, let's see what happens. And uh, let's see, it is a Sunday, which means we've got laundry noise. So I apologize for that. I really, really do. I hate having bad audio. Okay. Whew, man, that thing drinks some plastic. All right, cool. Oh my gosh, y'all, is that not cool? That is exactly why I did this kind of sideways laminate because I wanted to take oh my god the freaking laundry all right so uh, while things are a little bit quieter uh, this is the exact kind of laminate effect I wanted which is why I did it in line uh, you know with the blending block kind of going this way so that it's it's kind of cool it's like the brown is chasing the orange all the way around um, yeah so we're gonna keep that and basically I want that pretty much just as the tail Right, the body we're gonna do other stuff with. You know, we're gonna capsule it out and you know put some effect inside the body. Cause why not? And uh, you know what what's cool about these larger grubs, you know, you can kind of think of them like hand pour uh hand dipping tubes and you can get really fancy with it. So that is basically what we wanted to get out of step one. Yeah, so there's sort of a, a rough draft. It's it's kind of a crawfish pattern. You know, that's very crawfish colors. But uh, the body of the grub is not going to look like a crawfish. In fact, it's probably not going to match at all. But that's that's the point, just to have some fun. So, yeah. Oh, I'll show y'all a grub I've already made in this mold. Yeah, look at this crazy thing. Color shift, purples, golds. A little drizzle, a little sparkle flake there in the uh, shell <laughs> yeah you can do some fun things uh, you know a, a, basically a mold this big there's just room to work with just like a swim bait mold so you can have lots of fun with these all right so we've got some um, plastic cooked up here and uh, you know a, a mold this big we're gonna go with tube plastic um, probably actually better to go with salt water <laughs> in all honesty but I'm out of salt water blend oddly enough so we're just going to kind of do a clear capsule with some of that black flake just for texture and then a smidge of orange flake to sort of attempt to complement the orange in the tail, I guess is the idea. Whether or not that works, we'll find out. But essentially, we're just going to be pouring a capsule in this clear plastic. Yeah, well, that looks pretty cool. And then we have the option to layer color underneath it. So in order to do this, just like we would with a uh, hand pour worm mold, we're basically just gonna fill up this, this half cavity. Just fill it up there. And then pour it out. You can see it's already starting to run out. But we're just gonna pour it out, leaving a shell and that's what we want. So I'll let that run just a few more seconds there. And then, yeah, you can see you have this clear shell. And then now that's kind of your canvas. You can, you know, paint in paint. You can airbrush inside that. You can use dotting paint. You can brush powders. You can even hand pour in stripes, you know, to kind of go along with the, uh, you know, stacked kind of ribbing there. You can do a number of things. You can do anything you want. Um, just like with an open pour swim bait mold, you have this open half, right? Which you can do the same thing in as open half of a swim bait. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. So, but that right there is sort of step one. Yeah, there you go. See that orange up in the front, obviously the orange in the tail. Now we're gonna throw some black drizzle down like we did on the other ones because uh, in this case I think it works quite nice just to have some random spider webby effect there pretty cool pretty cool yeah I think we can work that in all right so we got some black plastic very opaque uh, mixed out and uh, now we're just gonna do a little black drizzle 
So we got our drizzle spoon, makes it fun. And uh, here we go. We're just gonna kinda sling some plastic in there at random. That's what makes that so much fun, is that you just do it and you don't have to worry about it. And of course you could uh, drizzle several different colors to layer. You sort of this marbly spider, spider webby pattern. You know, you don't have to stick to just one color. But I find that black generally works well as sort of a shell drizzle, if that makes sense. Like we have here on this capsule. And then you can put color behind that. And it generally looks nice. But, uh, you know, just the randomness of it is, is pretty cool. Now, the first time I ever drizzled was probably a year and a half ago. And it was just something I just kind of did one day. I had not really seen it done anywhere else, but you know, obviously, you know, hand pouring's been around a long time. I'm not the first person to do it, won't be the last, but I was so excited about it, I filmed a video on it, and uh, man, it is so much fun to do, um, especially when you start really layering a lot of color. But I, I like to mostly keep it simple with just a black layer. All right, now let's just have a little bit of fun here. So uh, I went ahead and just kind of brushed that with some um, black pearl powder and then, I don't know, I guess we'll go green next, right? Let's go green. Everybody's going green, including me. So we're just going to kind of brush that in. Maybe, uh, maybe like two ribs worth, right? If that makes sense. So if we uh, look at this thing. You know, we have all these ribs. You know, you could do one color per individual rib, but you know, this this is a little small for that. So we'll maybe do like two or three ribs worth, right? In terms of width for each color. That way we don't make it just completely impossible on ourselves. Oops, out of focus. But the idea being to uh, to just kind of layer a bunch of color in there and try to have fun with it. So maybe after that, we'll go to this blue, right? Throw some blue in. This is something I have not done in a long time is brushed with powders or brushed at all. Oh man, it's crazy already. I'll just kind of get it in there. It's going to look like a rainbow. And then, because we've so sort of got an orange theme going, we're going to do this copper orange. This is really cool stuff. If y'all have never seen this, this copper pearl, it's like a burnt orange uh, powder. And it just comes right out of the can, pretty much looking exactly like that burnt orange in the tail. So, that's pretty cool. It's a really, really awesome powder. Definitely check it out uh, if you're a bait maker. I think you'll have, I think you'll find a lot of good uses for it. It seems to just work well in a lot of, uh, yeah, in a lot of scenarios. So as you can see, we sort of have this little palette of color going on, and we may just leave the middle clear so that whatever body color is in there we can see. I don't know. But that's kind of where we're going with it. Yeah, so there's sort of what, what we've got. Kind of filled it on out there. Put the tail in. So as you can see, pretty colorful. And, uh, you know, this, we're not really seeing it as you're going to see it. You're still going to see that clear shell with the flake, the black drizzle, and then all these uh, dusted colors behind that. And then a little bit of the body color there in the center is going to be showing through. Um, so still, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot of layers happening here. Will it look good? Who knows? But, you know, the whole point is to have fun with a new mold, experiment, doing things. You may come up with something killer. Uh, you, you never know. There's so much that you can do. Um, and then, you know, that's the whole point is just to have fun. All right. Well, there's something I've never seen on this bait table. Uh, but anyway, that's, yeah, that's what we're doing. So we're gonna close these up. Now we're gonna preheat them, just like we would an open pour mold, because we are going to actually hand pour these, not inject. 
what I like about the way Josh did this mold, the configuration of it, it's just a straight top pour, or top port. So I can actually hand pour this. And so what, what that opens up the ability to do is hand pour in layers, right? You could hand pour in, right, vertical layers or a swirl. So for example, these right here, that's actually a divider cup poured in to this mold, right? That is uh, yellow pearl or um, gold pearl and purple pearl kind of swirled with the uh, divider cup hand poured into this mold, right? Now you could always inject a swirled pattern, but by, able, uh, by, by being able to hand pour it, you know, this is a thick cavity mold you're less likely to get denting or air pockets actually hand pouring it than using injection, in my opinion. So that's just kind of one little, I guess, added uh, feature there that, you know, probably not intentional, but it but it opens up the possibility to completely hand pour this mold, other than the tail section, of course, which allows you to then hand pour in some body patterns. Yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty wide opening, so you can pour it very, very, very easily. Yeah, that's pretty goofy looking right there. But we want to preheat, uh, preheat these molds just like the swim baits in the back, right? Because we want a functioning bait. We want a good bond between the tail and the body. We want any cold cracks in those skin layers to be nice and uh, you know sealed up and uh, hopefully get a good functional bait out of it. So uh, we're gonna have to let these preheat for a little bit. But the idea is to do it just like a swim bait um, where we get a nice functional solid bait that does not peel apart. All right guys, sorry for all the noise, but uh, we gotta pour these. So we're just gonna top pour the bodies. This is just blue highlight right here, which uh, should make a pretty nice body color. Just fill it on up. Then over here, you can fill this up. It's fun hand pouring injection molds, it really is. It almost feels forbidden. I actually uh, have a whole video on uh, certain injection molds that can be hand poured versus ones that can't, if you are interested in learning more about that. So before we do a reveal, a drum roll reveal that is, of course, uh, I did wanna give one shout out. Uh, so one of my uh, longtime bait making acquaintances, super talented bait maker, one of the nicest guys in the game, Nick Rundle, okay? He uh, recently started a YouTube channel, uh, I think probably going on about three or four months ago now. It's called The Bait Cave. And uh, Nick loves to do these sort of techniques. You know, maybe throw down some sort of capsule, not always clear, but he loves to, to do the dusting with powders and adding, you know, effect here and, um, you know, little little paint accents here super talented at it he's probably the best at that kind of stuff that i've personally seen and uh, just an all-around great guy messing around with this big grub mold got me thinking you know anyone that likes this would really like his channel so again it's right there the bait cave yeah and you can see he's got this giant grub there where uh or it looks like he did something really similar it's it's been a couple weeks since i've watched that video uh, but if you like some of this stuff, definitely check out Nick's channel, The Bait Cave. You're going to have a good time uh, seeing his amazing creations. And uh, yeah, he's an awesome guy. Check him out. All right, y'all see this handsome young man? That's my son, Landon. Landon likes to come out here in the garage and play with all daddy's stuff, including the drumsticks. We're teaching him how to play drums. I don't know where he put the drumsticks. I cannot find them. They are hidden. So... I cannot do a drum roll reveal, and for that I apologize. So we're just gonna have to do this the old fashioned way with no drumsticks. All right, here we go. See what we got. Hopefully it stays flat. Oh, look at this. Ha <laughs> ha, it's so colorful. It looks like a, uh, a box of, of markers. I don't know, that's really cool. And what's interesting is that this middle section here is where I did not put any powder in. And you can kind of see that uh, highlight uh, in there, right? Because, you know, this is the body color. Wow, that's neat. 
Look at this. Should just pop off, yeah. Look at that. Is that not something? <laughs> and you can see the, the drizzle makes kind of a cool, just a little outer effect. Just kind of adds another layer. Uh, let's see if the other one turned out as good. They, they should have. They were both uh, done the exact same way. Okay, that one's sticking. Oh, yeah. Check this out. This is neat, you guys. This is neat. Wow. Check it out. What do y'all think? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool and that's pretty different. You can do awesome stuff when you just go to a little bit of effort. And I tell you, the fa my favorite part is, is the tail still. The way that it laminated like that. I'm, I'm happy to know that it does that. Yeah. Is that not neat, you guys? <laughs> How about those for some grubs? It's, it's so cool. You know, and that's just one idea. You know, you could do the whole thing in a yellow perch pattern. You could do it in a bluegill pattern. You could do it in a crawfish pattern. You know, this is just kind of sort of a fantasy pattern. You know, this is not necessarily anything you'd see in nature. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of lure making, some of the funnest things are fantasy colors. Fantasy patterns that aren't necessarily real, but they're real enough. You know, you can throw this in the water and catch a fish. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, that's just one idea. And, you know, several different techniques all together. You know, we have laminate injection, we have capsuling, we have drizzling, we have dusting with powders, a little bit of hand pouring. You know, a lot of different things can come together all in the same bait and, uh, and do some cool stuff. So, question now is, how do we do? Yeah, it's kind of a cool look at them. Sort of inverse of one another. They look like two giant hooks. But yeah, what do y'all think? I think it's pretty dang cool. All right, well, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, definitely something cool. Yeah, you can see how bright the, the colors are out here in natural sunlight. It really makes the powders pop. I mean, any powder color in natural sunlight, especially hypershift, is mind-blowing. But uh, I would I would have had this video out sooner. Sorry it's a little late. Uh, just we got back from thanksgiving and then lo and behold we're all sick again so uh, we've been dealing with just coughing and stuff um, but uh, we're much 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 better now but uh, that kind of delayed me filming this video uh, you know because at the beginning of the video is you know back to the beginning of, uh, sorry back to the day after thanksgiving so i would have liked to have had it uh, out a little bit sooner but uh, just couldn't quite pull it off but hope y'all enjoyed the hope y'all enjoyed the video number one and, uh, you know, so many fun things that you can do with soft plastics. That's kind of what I wanted the, the takeaway to be, which is pretty much the takeaway for any video is imagine greater, you know, and that's, and that's why we do this hobby. But, uh, you know, any sort of big mold like this, you know, you can really open up uh, all, all your toolboxes and really do some fun things because you have the room to work in. But uh, anyways, uh, I hope everyone had a, had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, has a wonderful holiday season, of course. Many videos still to come, but uh, I think we're going to stop this one here. Hope y'all enjoyed a little bonus fishing footage at the beginning. Those triple tail were tasty. That I can tell you. But we will catch y'all in the next video. See you then.